Hi there guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, let's talk about vans. What's been going on with van prices here in the UK? Because there's been a massive drop in the sale of vans and prices, which I've been witnessing and seeing over the last few months, and in some cases they have dropped over 20% in a single month. The sales have dropped that much. So let's dive down into it. But before we do that, let's have a look at how we got to this position. Because van prices have been going up a bit like cars had, really since the COVID lockdown. And they peaked around the beginning of this year. Since then, prices have pretty much leveled off. But over the last few months, there has been quite a bit of movement in the market. But it's not as straightforward as to say that van prices are going up or going down, because it depends dramatically on what you're buying. Now, to give some background to this, why prices went up so much, and effectively they almost doubled since March of 2020, was it all started because of the lockdown. As we went into lockdown, van companies decided to basically halt production. They weren't interested in selling vans at that moment, and they weren't sure, obviously, what demand was going to be like. But as we were all sitting at home on furlough or most of us are sitting at home on furlough getting paid 80 percent pay we had spare money left over it was a record time of that period for people saving people weren't paying rents and mortgages because they were frozen credit cards were being frozen people had excess money because they weren't going out they couldn't socialize they couldn't go spend the money with family they couldn't go out for meals they weren't spending money at work or spending money on the dinners or putting fuel in the car so they had all this excess cash and people sat at home basically ordering things online and doing things like home improvement now during that time we had record activity for online purchasing. Companies like Every, formerly Hermes, and like Amazon, etc. There was a massive demand for parcels and stuff being sent out to UK households. When you've got a lot of parcels, you need the, the able to ability to move them, and van demand went through the roof. Also, at a time when new vans weren't readily available. Now, after a few months, as the world started to reopen and trade started to go back out, lots of people, including the self-employed, had a quite a lot of spare cash hanging around. They had access to low loans as well. A lot of the bounce-back loans came in and people went out starting to buy things and also a lot of people went out to buy vehicles and vans in particular and at the same time there was a massive chip shortage manufacturers could not get hold of the components they needed to order to complete the vehicles get them off the production line so they had to make a choice do they sacrifice van production or carry on with car production those companies that had two divisions so the van divisions and car divisions ultimately they're going to make the decision to focus on cars over vans because vans actually only make up a very small part of vehicle manufacturers businesses so of course they're gonna to have to prioritize car production you've got dealers all over the country asking for stock and the demand was there also they weren't just people weren't just buying vans they were buying pretty much everything was in demand this caused massive waiting lists for new vans vans on production lines sitting there were not able to go out to dealers so this put even more pressure on the used van market and as we saw over the next 12 to 18 months prices just went up and up and up i'll give you a quick example i bought a luton box van a renault master 2009 plate at about 75,000 miles on it in february of 2020 so that is one month before the covid lockdown Fast forward 18 months later, and the same vehicle, which was probably worth, I gave £3,200 for it to give some context. At the time when I bought it, it was probably worth about £4,200. I bought the vehicle to convert into a recovery truck, which you can see here. We actually later did do that. But at the time, it was a Luton box. I never used the vehicle other than maybe once to move house with. It had about 100 miles put on it. 18 months later, that vehicle went from around £3,200 to worth about £6,500 in the trade. In fact, I had people actually trying to buy it from me on a number of occasions. Retail on it was probably about eight and a half, nine thousand pounds That's how much prices had gone up in a short period of time, in 18 months. All of a sudden, any type of van was worth money, and it was a great time to be buying and trading in vans. But as they say, what comes up must come down. So is that happening now? Are we starting to see the massive decline and falling back towards those prices it before pre pandemic well not quite let me explain what i mean so let's first of all look at new vans new van sales have been on actually a bit of an increase over the last few months and in october of this year we actually had a 17 percent or just over 17 percent rise in van sales in for the month of october so clearly vans are in high demand and if we look at the list of the top 10 vans that are selling at the moment the usual suspects are there you've got the transit customs sitting at number one and they've got the standard transit van at number two you've also got vans such such as like the Mercedes Sprinter, the Renault Traffic, and even smaller vans like the Citroen Berlingo, which also made the list. But crucially, all the top 10 selling vans in the UK in October have one thing in common. Every single one of them is fitted with a combustion engine, i.e. a diesel engine. 
Not one electric van made the list. And why? Because electric vans are in absolute free fall. Sales have really started to fall down quite heavily. They have dropped 20%, in fact, over 20% in the month alone of October. And there is very good reason for that. The two main driving factors is the first one is a government decision. Just recently, the UK government announced that it would be knocking on the head its combustion engine ban from 2030 to 2035. So all of a sudden, the need to go and change your van to electric is no longer there. People who were sitting on the fence and were sort of trying to wait as long as possible till they had to commit to electric van now don't have to worry about that happening for at least another 12 more years. Which is why we're starting to see already people now going back out and now deciding to actually go and commit to another combustion engine vehicle, which they can probably use in another five or six years, whatever, how long they want to use it for, and then maybe look at what's on the market then as technology advances. And I would argue as well the technology does need to advance a bit further. We've come a long way over the last five years of electric vans, and I would say small electric vans are actually starting to become a real viable option but larger panel vans i'm not so sure the reason being is but one is but down to the cost and also the range of these particular vehicles let's take the new ford transit e as an example if you went out today and bought a brand new ford transit e in standard form it will cost you including vat fifty-seven thousand pounds yes 57 grand for a van and that is in standard form as well now that will get you the standard version with a 160 mile range but that is what ford claims and that is not really the reality in real life it's going to be doing around 120 130 miles in real world conditions so think about it if you went out and spent 57 grand on a new transit van and you wanted to go out say 60 70 miles to if you're a builder say let's go and price a job up for example you go all the way out there and you've got to think to yourself well if it's 60 70 miles there and i've got to get back as well i'm going to have to end up charging this vehicle up because ultimately if it's a cold day it's only really got sort of 120 130 mile range and that is some new as well remember two years later that's probably going to drop down about six seven percent on average you end up having to make a stop in order to recharge the batteries and it's the inconvenience of doing that you've got to find a place that will be able to charge it up you've also then got to wait right charges which can take anything from sort of 20 minutes to half an hour depending on the vehicle it can turn into a half an hour or an hour just to get some charging to get yourself back home. It's just not as practical as what people would like them to be. And the reason for that is because the technology, although it is advancing, is just not quite there yet. The main problem you're going to have with large panel vans, particularly EV ones, is you're going to have a trade-off between what the actual weight of the van can carry and also how many batteries you can stuff in it. So most panel vans in the UK are sort of three and a half ton gross weight. So manufacturers have to work out how many batteries they can actually cram in it whilst not affecting too much of the payload of the van. What is the point in having a van that can only do it can do 300 mile range, for example, but can only hold half a ton? Most people who buy larger vans need the actual weight and space for it to carry. So there's no point having a van that's got super duper range that can't carry anything. And that is the issue we have with battery technology at the moment. Now that will get better ultimately. Go back 10 years, the technology has come on leaps and bounds. But this is more of a reason why people are probably going to sit on the fence and maybe wait five or ten years and see what comes down then. Electric batteries will be better by that point, and maybe even hydrogen might have come along a bit further and who knows what that might bring as well so i completely get why people might want to turn away now from evs and if you were looking now to buy an electric van particularly brand new i would say hold off i would not be buying one at the moment the prices are already starting to come down quite considerably and you're probably going to see a lot of incentives next year from van manufacturers in order to get people to buy new ev vans so new van prices with combustion engines are doing really great and electric vans are doing really poor. But what about the used sector? Well, let's break it up into three different parts. You've got the bottom of the market, so the budget vehicles, which are basically non-Euro 6 compliant. We're talking about vans sort of sub four grand. We then got the bits in the middle, which we'll come to in a minute. And then we've got the Euro 6 vehicles. Now, Euro 6 vehicles are going to be vans from sort of 2015, 16 onwards. And they're going to be obviously quite expensive maybe some sort of six grand upwards you might get a high mileage euro six van something small and there is good reason why you will need to buy a euro six van for instance if you live in a ulez area you will understand what that means you need euro six in order to go into for instance ulez and other places around the uk where euro six is required in order to enter the town or city or the boundaries of where that particular area is if not you'll have to pay a charge and that's a place you're going to visit a lot or it's a place where you're going to have to work and go pass through or where you live you're going to need those compliant vehicles so a lot of people are now trying Trying to scramble for euro 6 vans and with the recent change in policy from the government that they haven't got to worry about looking to maybe change to ev there's even more reasons why people might want to update their used van and maybe just look to get a used euro 6 van 
At the auctions at the moment, and the people I've spoken to, van sales, generally Euro 6 stuff is doing okay at the moment. I wouldn't say anyone's breaking any records, but they're going along quite nicely. I'd say people are getting a little bit more picky, the dealers in particular, about what Euro 6 vans they're buying. In fact, Motor Trade magazine mentioned this recently, that the auctions have noticed that their buyers are being a little bit more picky about the stock they're buying. But Euro 6 vans at the moment are doing reasonably okay. There doesn't seem to be any sort of massive decrease in the price of those particular vans, which clearly shows that the demand must be still be pretty decent. So the more expensive Euro 6 compliant vans are doing reasonably okay. But what about the bottom of the market? So we're looking at vehicles or vans sub £4,000, which are going to be predominantly non-Euro 6 compliant. This is the entry level to market, if you like. Well, actually, surprisingly, they're doing reasonably okay as well. Now, if you need a Euro 6 van, there is no point going out and buying a two, three, four thousand pound cheap runaround van if you're going to have to spend £12.50 every time you want to go and use it in a Euro 6 area. But there are plenty of people, millions of us in fact, who don't live anywhere near a Euro 6 area where they need to worry about having a Euro 6 compliant vehicle. So in which case they could just want a cheap van to run around in, get a few years out of it, run it into the ground and buy another one. It still makes complete sense to buy a cheapy old van that you can just effectively run into the ground. Some people don't want to get packed up with big loans, particularly with interest rates going up, and they don't want the hassle of getting a lease van, which they get penalised for if it gets damaged, and they also got to pay all the payments for it monthly going forward. There's good reasons why people People just buy a cheap van and run them into the ground and i'm not seeing any real big drops in those van prices really these days you need to spend sort of three or four grand to get a van that's probably half decent and even then it's going to be reasonably quite old and still have quite high mileage on particularly if it's a larger van but there's certainly not been any return towards the levels we saw pre-covid and i just don't see it going forward either but what about that stuff in the middle what do i mean well you're looking at vans where they're not quite euro 6 compliant so maybe before 2015 16 but they're not in the three or four grand cheapy category either so we're talking about vans like big panel vans for example like big sprinter vans transporter vans the volkswagen transporters a lot of them get used for sort of campers and day vans people quite like them niche type commercial vehicles like recovery trucks that will be a few years old that are worth quite decent money tippers for example flatbeds these sort of fall in the middle they're not cheap vans but they're not euro 6 compliant either now if you need euro 6 then they're not really much good to you but there is still a market for these vans and there is still a little bit of demand but i would say of those three sectors that's the one that's probably going to be the most affected by over the next few months with any price reductions i just don't see there's been as much demand for those vehicles as you would say for a euro 6 compliant van if you're going to spend 10 grand on a very big panel van that's non-euro 6 compliant you've got to ask yourself well can i better use that money elsewhere could i maybe lease a van and put a bit down as a deposit and just pay monthly payments and get a van that can lease or do i spend a bit more and buy one that is actually euro 6 compliant even if it's got a few more miles on it because you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you buy a van and then spend a lot of money on it and then you end up having to sell it a year or two later because it needs to be Euro 6 compliant or the area where you live has all of a sudden found itself becoming Euro 6 compliant area. Places like Manchester are already threatening to do this and also you can guarantee that there'll be other towns and cities that will end up introducing Euro 6 compliance in their towns and cities or effectively just banning diesels altogether. So of that used sector I would say those vans in the middle sort of five to ten grand that aren't euro six compliant are probably the ones that are going to take the most of the tumble over the next few months so i'll be very cautious about buying anything in that category so to sum up new van sales are up ev van sales are on the ground new sales are doing reasonably okay with the exception maybe of some bits in the middle which i'll be a little bit cautious about going forward but we'll see over the next few months what happens to vans and the prices we'll keep an eye on them major shifts in the economy for instance if a recession was around the corner then you could arguably see those prices fall back backwards but so far here in the uk we seem to have avoided that but you just don't know what is around the corner so let me know guys your thoughts on vans have you got any stories have you bought and sold any vans during the last few years and made money on them are you looking to buy a new van have you bought an ev van or are you sitting on the fence and waiting to see what happens let me know your thoughts and comments guys so thank you for watching this video please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so click that like and subscribe button it helps me out immensely thanks for watching and i'll see you all in my next video